All right, since I already had my assets created beforehand, I built my Ashley a little bit different. So we're going to actually uh, run through and try to build our stuff a little bit differently. So <clears throat> with Ashley, you could read the original engine, um, but we want to be as efficient as possible creating something for a phone. So that means that we need to have it run light and we need it to not have a million things that it has to manage. So that's where pooling comes in handy because with pooling you can say, you know what, I want, at any given time I want, say, a hundred entities. There's going to be a hundred entities in the game on what I see, my my view. So once an entity is killed, then it goes back into a pool and gets reset and it gets used again. So when you create the engine, it's setting aside all the memory needed for creating the components and the entities um, and even your uh, so all, all the components that are getting aside to the entities and the entities themselves so that your memory um, is not going to continue to increase as you play the game longer and longer it's going to stay at a um, specific number um, and we can improve that more by making sure that we don't have multiple instances where we're creating many vectors and things like that so pooling uh, for our engine will be um, one of the most efficient things that we could use to keep our memory down. So I'm going to have another set of parameters and I'm going to just call this Ashley and we want to have an engine. So let's do private pooled engine okay and we're just going to call it engine and we're going to have to create systems but let's get this set up first okay so we have our pooled engine now in our main game screen we've set up our viewport we set up our camera we have our batch um, let's go ahead and create the engine the engine is going to be a new pooled engine. And then we have four parameters that we can put in. Our entity pool initial size. So let's say you set that as 100. There's going to be 100 entities in your game at any one time. It's not going to let you create more than that. You could change it um, for what you need. Um, let's So it will set aside um basically memory for 100 and then you can set for your max so let's say my max i'm just going to do 500 for right now but you could do you know i don't want it to go over that amount so we if we are running into issues with memory usage when we're trying to play our game we could bump this down um, and then just make sure that we're dealing with it when we're creating um, our component size, so let's say I'm setting it initially at 300 and it's not going to go more than 1,000. So we lock in uh, when we're creating what we need. Okay. And then really our next step would be to uh, create entities and start our systems. So let's go through and we're going to try to build for the Box2D renderer and to create that entity. So um, for managers, let's call this entity manager because eventually it's going to hold all of the entities that we create in our game manager. We're going to use this for linking up and building all the pieces that we need to build. So in our entity manager, I'm referencing my old code to see how we're going to rewrite this. 
in my entity manager, we build our player by components. So we know that we're going to end up having a constructor. I'll insert. that is going to hold a reference to the game. So Redbeard Run, Redbeard Run. Um, it's going to hold a reference to our world. Excuse me, world, world. That means that we can't create the entities until after the world's been created because they have to go in our world. Um, we're going to need to have reference to the sprite batch. So I'm going to pass that in, batch. And we're going to have to have reference to that pooled engine. Pooled engine, and we'll call it engine. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and create those. Private red beard run. Private world world. Private sprite batch batch. And private pooled engine engine okay so in here then in our constructor this dot redbeard run equals redbeard run this dot world equals world batch equals batch Now we have our pieces. <clears throat> we have our body generator that we used. So we're going to need to have an instance of that to be able to build our bodies. So let's go ahead and create that. Um, so we need a private body generator. That we'll just call generator and generator is going to equal a new body generator that we had to pass the world into so that's why we are doing it that way okay we're not doing asset management yet all that stuff is good for now all right so We're good once we create the entity manager. Now we can create a method for building an entity. Public. What do we want to call it? Call it public entity is what we're going to return, and we're going to call it spawn entity. And we're going to have to import that. So we want to pass back an Ashley entity. And right now we can, so we call it string entity name. We're going to give it a name as we're creating it. We could give it initial X and Y value where we want it to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on here, when we're looking at our body generator, let's just open up that and look at it. We have a position, we have a, slide, a size, a force, a body type, 
for the body definition, a body type for building which body we want, um, and then the types of interactions. Those we're going to actually rewrite um, and they'll get designed in a couple other different places. So our body though, we're passing in that value. So that vector two position, that, that could be our, our X and that could be our Y. Size, force. I'm not going to worry about it yet. All right, so when we are creating an entity, we, when we're using the pooling, we're using the engine to create it. So we initially create the entity, and then we are setting up the components that make up that entity. Um, so how they move, how they interact, if they're able to collect stuff, if you have to have them hold certain data, um, what type of animations they're going to have, all of that we're going to have to build. So ultimately what we're doing is we're building a method that will do the other pieces that we need. So, Try not to do this all at once. Let's do the body component. Which would be the type that we're passing in. And an X velocity and a Y velocity. Okay. We can change that later. Um, so I'm going to have a private method that I can only access here that's going to pass back an entity. And I'm just going to call it add body component. I've built this entity manager several different ways. Um, to me, this makes it um, almost the easiest way because I can pass an entity in, I can add the component. And all I have to do is just plug in the methods when I want to start creating something to do it exactly how I want it to. So we're going to pass that name into it. Um, we're going to need to pass the, well, we're going to end up having to pass an, uh, a type to it. Um, but we could just set that. So let's do an X and y i'll call that good for now okay and in this body component um or any component that you're going to create you're going to have to build that so let's look at our components we need to create a component so our component is not going to be super complex um, let's just call this body component. Now the component, like what I mentioned before, it's fairly simple. It's really just a data bag. So it's going to implement the Ashley component type. So I'm looking at Ashley component. Um, and we're also going to be implementing that poolable because we're using that pooled engine. So this poolable right here, which now we have to implement methods, which is just the reset. So once they die and I, rem um, I kill them off, I remove them, it's going to go back into that pool and reset. So um, I know for my body component, I'm going to have to hold a box 2D body. So let's put that in. And um, let's go ahead and do uh, private Boolean and let's just call it dead, dead. And I'll say it's false when I create them. Okay, in the reset, this is where we'd have to set it back. So 
the body that I initially assign it, I need it no longer to have that when it resets. So body is going to be null until it gets reassigned and dead would equal false because they are no longer dead. Okay. Now I'm going to end up having a number of methods for um, getters and setters. for the body and for if they're dead. That way I can access them because they are private. Um, and set active is active. Um, we could also set our bodies so that they can be active or not active if we don't, if we need them to go to sleep. So we're going to add a couple more methods, public void set active, and then we'll pass in a Boolean value, let's just call it active, and here is where we're going to be pulling the body and we can add, um, set its active state, set active, with that Boolean flag and pass that in. And then we can check it. So public void is active. We don't need that, but we are going to return. Oops. This would be a Boolean. Return body dot is active. Active. Oh, I'm typing right. Active. Okay, so this will return if the body is asleep or not, so that we could choose to wake it up. Um, that is really all there is to a component. It really does not hold anything. We are basically only holding uh, two pieces of data for a body component. And then we are able to, we have one method to reset, and then basically the rest is just getters and setters. Okay. So then in our entity manager, um, we need to create that body component in our add body component. So body component, body component equals, and remember the engine has to create it because it's using the pools. So engine dot create component and um, this is where you're going to have to use a class. So I'm using, it's creating based off the template of the body component dot class. Okay. So then inside here is where you're actually plugging in all of your creation of your body. Um, and then you are ultimately returning that body component you're returning that entity because you're adding that body component to the um, the entity. And then, so once we end up building it, we're ultimately going to do this code would be the entity that we're passing in dot add component. And we'd add that body component to it. So we're building it. So Inside of here is all of the method that we're going to be using to build the body. And what I envisioned when I did this is that um, I could pass in the entity name. Uh, so let's say that I had the player, but then I also had skeletons and snakes like I did in my game. I could look at that name and based off of that using switch statements then i know how i want to build that body for that entity um, which ultimately made it a lot easier for me to build things so let's start adding a switch statement for that piece for the player so i'm going to do switch 
entity name. And then this is going to be what I'm going to use to ultimately plug in for creating enemies and such. So entity name. Why do you not like it? Oh, I guess we're setting the language up. So I may ask you to um, bump up to uh, Java 7. We're good. Okay. Get me out of there. All right. So I know I'm going to have a case for the player. Now, inside the player, we're going to end up having to set up all of those pieces. So, what we do know that we're going to need to have. When we're building, let's look at our body generator to see how much that is doing for us. Our body generator has a fixture def that we're doing right there. Um, it has the body, body def, fixture def. So since we're linking up we can make some changes where we're having it do it automatically for our, our entity manager. So here I'm going to go ahead and um, create a fixture def. I'll just call it F def. Mm, fixture def. And I think we could get away with that. So inside of our player, we're going to have to create the player. So we have to have the initial X and Y position. We're going to have to have their filter categories and mask bits. So what we were doing in our body generator, we were passing that in, but we are actually going to create another component, which is going to be the type. So instead of putting that there, we're going to a type component. And this is going to implement the component from Ashley and the poolable engine so we need to implement that interface poolable implement the reset all right so our type component is going to hold that information that we are initially put in I go back to the main game screen. This our ground player and enemy. We're going to basically extrapolate that out into our type component. Okay, so we can still have them as private static final. Um, just a player. Let's create the initial type. So 
So we'll say private. Actually, let me do that here. Now I've tried setting this up a couple different ways. You could try it with enums um, for Box2D, though it's looking for a short. So we also have to be careful, though, of the type that we're looking for. So if we can combine things, it makes things a lot easier. Um, so ground or level, um, and I'm going to actually just change that to level because that's going to be basically anything. Level, we have our player, we have an enemy, we could put in weapons, we could put in friendly, we could have an other. So let's do the other. And actually, I think I'm going to put that as the top. Private, oops. Private, static, final, short. And we'll just have it initialized as an other. Um, if it's not set, it's just not going to interact with anything. So two, four, eight, and Remember, these got to be all bases of two, 16. Um, so when we start adding interactives, we would add another, another one. We can't add like a million of them because um, we'll actually run out. So we have to be mindful of that. So after I have that, then I have the one that I'm holding on to. So this is um, the type components type which would be a private short type and then we can say that it is other okay so we're assigning that as the initial the reset would set it back to other and then we have our getters and setters again so and the only ones that we have on here is the type we're setting and getting the type and I want that actually here it looks funny okay so we just have a get type and we have a set type so then let's go back to our entity manager and we're going to build that. So our FDEF our FDEF dot filter dot category bits is who we are is going to be the type component dot Why is that not showing up? Because I made this private. Now, there could be arguments being said of why don't we use this in our figures, which we could. We could most absolutely do that. Um, let's actually do that. Because I didn't do that. Collision types. Put that as a comment. Okay, so type component. Then this is not going to be other. It's going to be figures. Dot other. And that's not recognizing it because in figures, I have it as private. And since I want everything to access it. Um, it needs to be public. Um, if you need to make a change on a lot of lines, if you hold Alt, you can drag the cursor down and it will allow you to edit multiple lines all at once. So I could change that really fast. So now figures.otherworks, 
we're setting it back to figures.other. Um, now in